Welcome to the world of Cinema 4D, where creativity meets power. Whether you are a total beginner of just dripping your toes into 3D for the first time, you've landed in the right place. In this tutorial, I'm going to take you step by step through the tools, tips and tricks that make Cinema 4D the go-to software for designers, animators and visual effect artists. Get ready to unlock your creative potential and bring your wireless ideas to life. So buckle up, because the journey starts right now. First of all, let's start Cinema 4D. This is how user interface looks like. We have a lot of tools here, but we will go through them and we will make it more clear for us. Because you are probably a little bit confused now with all these tabs and tools and icons. This is a viewport window and this is our toggle active view settings. We can split our viewport to multiple view and uh, control our scene from independent view. For navigating in our view, we could use span, scale or orbit camera. There is more efficient way how to navigate yourself in your viewport. You can use key shortcuts. For camera pan, press alt plus middle mouse button. For zooming, press alt plus right mouse button. For orbiting, press Alt plus left mouse button. You can bring some objects to your scene and try free movement in the viewport. If you have some object outside of camera view and you want to show him with all objects in scene, press H. Uh, this shortcut will zoom out to all objects in your scene. On the other side, if you want to focus on some specific object, select him and press S. Now I will show you the side toolbars. On the right side is toolbar with some objects we can bring to our scene. On left toolbar is useful tools that Cinema 4D recommends based what mode we are in. This panel is changeable. Some objects have multiple options. I can see them with long mouse click. It's like a shell with other object types. Null object is specific type of object. It's great for organizing and parenting other objects. Now let's see how hierarchy works. We can put some objects inside others. For example, we can use deformers to deform some primitive objects. We can drag and drop our deformer to some other object. Here is attribute panel. It's used for changing attributes of selected objects or selected tools. Let's move to left toolbar. As we already know, these tools are situation related. So if we change our situation, for example for modeling, our tools are changed. But let's stay in basic mode, in model mode. First tool is selection tool. It's for selecting multiple objects. There is also selection filters, so you can filter objects you want to be able to select. Next tools are made for moving, scaling, rotating and placing objects. There is also spline pen for splines and scatter pan for generating clones. That red, green and blue lines you see in the scene is called gizmo. We have two basic types of gizmo, world and object. We can switch between them with this button. Sometimes it's nice to have the option to switch gizmo when you want to move with your object to some specific place. There is also option to lock some axes so you can prevent unwanted moving, rotating and scaling your objects on some specific axis. I painted some strokes with Doodle Paint tool. On the right attributes panel, I can control attributes of active tool. On the top side of this toolbar is Commander tool, so it's like search tool. You can search your specific objects or tools in Cinema 4D. If you don't know where you could find some specific object or tool, you can try use search bar or commander and try to find that. In Cinema 4D is concept or generators and editable meshes. If you create some basic shape like cube, you just created generator. Problem is that generators cannot be edited manually on polygon level base, so you don't have access to points, edges and uh, polygons. The advantage is, as long as you stay in this mode, you have the option to change the properties of the generator, the cube. 
You can change its number of polygons, dimension and proceed non-destructively. Your cube is parametric. When you decide to convert your generator, now its cube, to editable mesh, you can click with right button to object in object manager and press make editable. But for this task I like to use key C on my keyboard. If you made your object editable, you just lost access to generator properties because it's not generator anymore. But now you can click to polygons, edges and points and edit object manually. You can always switch back to model mode, but it's just basic model now, not a generator. If you are in editing mode in polygons, edges or points, on left tab appears some tools related to modeling. There is existing much more of them in Cinema 4D. Some of them you can access with right click to the mesh and some are hidden in other tabs. Again, if I'm in some editing tool, I can use the attribute window on the right side to change some properties. Now let's move to the upper area of our screen. These buttons is something like situation features. They can change the way I'm accessing and editing my scene. For example, axis tool can change the center point of my object. Snapping tool can help me snap my mouse to some areas. I can set the snapping tool with the little settings uh, button. The world tool can change the center of my world. But I don't think you will ever need this tool, also same as next one. Sometimes I accidentally click here and switch world axis. If it happens to you, you can flip the world axis back to the Y axis. Next tool is called soft selection. You can softly deform new meshes with that. I'm using this tool really often, but it works only in polygon, edges or points mode. You can change settings of soft selection on settings next to the button or down in attribute panel. Symmetry tool is made for symmetrical modeling. For example, if you are modeling face or car, you can select specific axis for symmetry. But uh, sometimes if your geometry is not symmetrical, this is uh, not always works. So be careful, it works only if you already have symmetrical geometry. If it bothers you opening settings window again and again, you can use pin button to pin window. Your window will keep open even you click somewhere else. There are situations when you want to see only objects you are working on right now. For this situation is viewport solo mode. If you selected your object and click to viewport solo, other objects will be invisible until you click to viewport solo again. Here are rendering buttons. Render viewport, render out and render settings. We will cover this in some other tutorial. Material dock is place where you have stored your materials. With double click you can create new base material. Materials can be dragged and dropped to objects in viewport or objects manager. If you have material selected you can change its properties in attribute section. If you keep dropping your materials to object, you can see that they are stacked in object manager as tags. Tags are data related to object. It can be materials, stored polygon section, vertex maps, UV maps and other types of data that is pinned to object. You can also drag tag from one object to another. Now let's look at displayed modes. We have several options to display the scene. Some of them support shadows, some show the wireframe of the objects and some just simple lighting. Sometimes shadows are harm harmful because we can't see our models in them. In camera option we can change how we are viewing our scene. Let's create camera first. We can switch between cameras in view or change perspective. I'm usually using one view as camera view and second for a free move. With this setup I'm able to control my camera and my scene effectively. View option it's like video settings in video game. You can make your shadow more detailed in viewport here or in the other side try to optimize your viewport if you have potato PC. Filter option is for filtering objects based on type from your viewport. If you have lot of mess in scene, it's handy to have options to hide for example all cameras. My favorite settings is hide everything that is not geometry in playback. 
So if you play your animation, you can see only your geometry. Arrangement panel is great if you want to personalize your views. I like to use uh, two view, one for camera and one for perspective for free move. On the bottom of your scene is timeline. This is place where you have all animations. You can set bunch of things here like how long your animation will be. This is also place where you can see your keyframes. What is keyframes? Keyframes are used for animation. It's frames that holds state of objects, so all frame between two keyframes automatically form movement. Movement between keyframes are driven with animation curve. When you are editing your curves, you massaging your animation to look sick. On the top left side of screen is Asset Browser tab. You can use Maxon's pre-made assets or put your assets here. There is bunch of materials, modifiers, objects, models, animations and other assets. The top menus are full of options. These are menus where are all Cinema 4D functions, tools, objects, models and buttons. Everything we've been talking about is also somewhere in this section. In theory, it would be possible to control your Cinema 4D only with these menus, but it would be super ineffective. Just keep in mind that objects we are seeing in our tabs and menus are the same objects we can find on top menus. This is how Cinema 4D works. Some tools are in multiple places and the same result is going to be achieved a lot of paths. Top right side is full of layouts. This is pre-made layouts where are tools for specific tasks. For example, sculpting layout have prepared palette for you full of sculpting brushes. You can create layouts yourself and that is reason I have there much more layouts than you. In Cinema 4D you can open several projects at once. You can see these projects at the top left in individual tabs. The cool thing is that you can easily switch from project to project and even copy things from one project to another. Opening and saving projects is possible through this file section. Done! You have passed the Cinema 4D speedrun and know the layout of the program. Now it will be easy for you to jump to another tutorials where we will finally create something nice together.